Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Charlie and I'm a senior product designer. And in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys my UX design behavioral interview template for Notion. This template is available on my Gumroad right now. So if you want to go into my description and click on the link to my Gumroad, then you can find it there. Or you can also go down into the pinned comments of this video and there should be a link there as well. Now to start off, I want to talk about what a behavioral or sometimes called a technical interview is for a UX design interview process. And these usually happen relatively early on in the interview process itself. And it's one where you speak with an interviewer and they ask you a bunch of different questions and you in return need to give different scenarios where you've encountered the question or the situation that they're asking about. Now, sometimes it can be called a technical interview. And I find that really kind of silly because like, don't worry, you're not going to be asked to like, mock up something in Figma just on the spot or something that's honestly really weird, but they can still be quite anxiety inducing. For me, I find these interviews to be quite difficult and pretty nerve wracking as well, because it is not just during a behavioral interview that some of these questions will be asked, but anytime your future coworkers or your future managers can ask you a question to kind of see how you would act in a certain situation, meaning that you always have to be prepared and that is a little bit nerve wracking. I always used to find these interviews to be be quite difficult because you know how they teach you that whole star method thing and then I would try to write out all of the answers to every single question I can think of and force myself to memorize it. But because of trying to write it out in a specific method, I would refine and polish it so much that it actually became very difficult for me to memorize even though it was my own writing because I refined it so much that it didn't even feel like something that I would say myself. Also because during the interview it was like I was was waiting for a specific question to be asked by the interviewer. It also made me feel very passive towards my own job hunting success and I really didn't like that feeling. And it took me recognizing that for me to really take a step back and try to find a way for me to prepare effectively for these behavioral interviews. And the one big mindset change that I had that made me really understand how to ace these behavioral interviews was knowing that behavioral interviews are meant to test your capabilities. And here are some of the most common reasons why a question is being asked during a UX behavioral interview. They might be trying to test your ability to communicate and influence. They want to see how you navigate tensions in teams with stakeholders and with clients. They want to see if you can collaborate with others, if you can prioritize and respond to change and finding out how you deal with ambiguity. So here is my UX design behavioral interview template that you can find on my Gumroad. And what it has on the main section is these tables. And for each of these tables, they are separated by the company that you worked in. And I like to start with my most recent company at the top and then going backwards and on the way down. So kind of like how you would structure a resume or your LinkedIn profile. And other than the company name, we also have an item. And the first two are examples. So these are real examples that I use and how I answer certain questions that I'm asked in an interview. I'm going to click on the first one, which is multilingual online form which is a scenario that I ran into a few years ago when I was just starting off as a senior product designer. So it opens up and I have it set to the side view, but of course, when you download it and add it to your own notion, then you can change it to whatever you want to. So I'm going to open this page so you can see how it's actually structured. Now you do get two examples from this template, but this first one, the first thing I like to have here is the capability being tested for. Every question that you're asked in an interview has a purpose. They want to test for certain characteristics that they want to see in a team. So really common ones, and especially for this example that I'm working on, things they want to see are conflict resolution skills, your ability to communicate skills, how are you when it comes to collaboration? And do you take any opportunities or initiatives? So these are really common traits that you want to see in a designer that you end up hiring. And then here's a scenario which I'm talking about. In this example, this is when I get a question like, tell me about a time you had conflicting feedback from stakeholders. Now, this is a really common question that I see, especially as I get further and further along doing more senior and lead product design interviews. They want to see how you manage different groups of people and if you can influence and also negotiate or collaborate with them. Now these three toggles you can open up and these are really the three things that I feel like you need to hit 
during an answer for one of these questions. Now, because this is an example, I couldn't just leave you guys with a few bullet points. So I actually wrote out my whole spoken response to this question. And it does look a little bit long, but when you talk about it, it actually goes by really quickly. Another thing that I included with these examples is the reasoning behind why I've worded or use certain phrases when answering this question. And these are all under different comments. So you can just click on one of these highlighted yellow section and that should provide you with a bit more of my reasoning behind why I chose to answer this way. And from my Gumroad template, I do have two of these answering really common questions that you would get during behavioral UX design interviews. I also have a couple companies, company one and company two, that are like templates for you guys so that you can know how to structure the rest of your questions and anything else you want to write down. And having a structure like this just really helps me when it comes to memorizing and also making a sound like something very natural to me. Then under each of these company titles, you can click the new column here and then I'll just open up another template for you where if you open it up, the three little toggled options will be available. And I ended up naming these different pages with a default name of project slash feature slash person because that's how I tend to write it, like a specific feature that I worked on, a specific project that I work on, or sometimes even like a situation working with another individual in my company. The next column over has all of the questions and how they would typically be phrased when you are doing a UX design behavioral interview. I have over 20 of the most common questions that I've ever been asked during these interviews and next to it, you have all of the different capabilities that is actually being tested for. Now I put these because I feel like it's really important to kind of center and ground how you choose to respond to each of these questions, because it's by keeping these in mind that you're able to truly answer the question that they're asking. So that really covers the bulk of the tables in the template. Another thing I ended up including were keywords. Now these are words that you can kind of sneak in to any of your interviews, whether it's behavioral, your whiteboarding interviews, your culture interviews, anything like that. But these are keywords that you can include that companies really like to hear and something that they're looking for. I included a few here that are my favorites and I also included a tip on how you can find more. Now one thing I will say is to be careful not to jam all of them into one single answer at risk of sounding like an AI robot or really just like inauthentic or anything like that. Really try to use your best judgment here. And of course, I also included questions that you should ask your interviewer at the end of an interview. Typically, when it comes to behavioral interviews, you're most likely going to be talking to an actual designer or a design manager that you're going to be sharing or working with on a team. So you can ask more design focused questions. And I included some of my favorites here. Usually you want to pick about two or three, really kind of just depends on which ones you feel like you need the answer to and which ones you want to prioritize prioritize. One tip that I will give you when it comes to asking questions at the end of an interview is to make sure that you finish off with a very softball, positive question so that you can leave with a very positive and lighthearted, happy kind of note. One of my favorite questions to ask at the end of an interview is what is the most recent success that you've celebrated with your team? Something that should be really easy to answer for a manager or a designer. Plus it also tells you what kind of project they just wrapped up. Do they have a cool down period or a little bit of a celebration or is it just like go, go, go. Um, or even worse, if like they don't celebrate or they don't have any recent successes, not really sure how you want to, or if you want to join a team like that. And that is the whole notion template, or I guess kind of this page is the template. And then I guess this is kind of like a guide on how to handle behavioral interviews. If you're interested in picking it up, definitely check out the link in my description and to my Gumroad. If you don't have Notion, I also have a link there for you to download it. It is free for a personal plan and it's a really great tool for you to help organize like any thoughts or track any projects or, you know, any day to day life things that you might want to track. There's also a link to my Gumroad in my pinned comments down below this video. And on my Gumroad, I do have a few templates, including this one for UX design behavioral interviews. I also have the ultimate career template that I have also for Notion, and I also have a UI design sketch kit. Now, if you are looking for something a bit more specific, like career advice or case study reviews, or even mock interviews with me, then I do have one-on-one -on -one time this set up on my too super easy. Here, this is which will also be linked like in my description. So and also I'll put in my pay comments, haven't had like, why not everything else how to deal going with this in my pay comments too. Too And I think that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, be sure to follow me on Instagram and TikTok, and also if you want 
want to join my UI design process live streams on Twitch, then definitely check me out there. All the links are in my description. And yeah, I, I think I'm kind of like, I think I've said that enough. So thanks again, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.